Hi everyone, we're here with our new 2025 Model 3 Performance and we're going to test a number of different upgrades and compare the lap times that we get here at TMP. It's been thunderstorming and raining all night, so we got Jesse over there making sure the track is dry so we have a fair comparison. We're going to start with a completely stock car. Now I should say that we have put some mountain pass parts on the car to make our work here a little bit easier today. So we've got our front upper control arms and rear toe arms installed, but they're at the factory length. Once we do this stock run, we'll then install what's like a street setup and see what kind of lap times we get with a, a setup that you would enjoy on the street, but you could take to the track. And then we're gonna do a full track setup with all the camber and our big meaty tires and see how fast we can go. Let's do it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead now with a stock car and see how fast we can go. Got track mode on. 95% charge, so we're trying to be as consistent as we can here. And no sandbagging just because it's the stock run, no okay? No sandbagging. Full, full 10 out of 10. If it's not good, we'll do it again. All right, I like to hear that. Adam, if he beats my SR Plus lap record, I'm leaving. He's going to beat my 240 lap record we'll in no time, so. <laughs> All right, so we're back at TMP. It seems like we're always coming to this track and I'm excited to see what this new car will do stock. I've got our cooling party controller on now, so we've got a lower power limit just for this warm-up lap so that I can get a feel for it without using too much charge. And then I'll turn it off after the first lap. We'll have to see how the brakes do. That's my main question. Tires actually have more grip than I thought they would, which is pretty cool. Definitely feels like it's got a, a I can feel the more rear bias, which I really appreciate. Don't have as much understeer. On power, but you do have a lot of understeer mid corner. So you gotta get that, that typical rear wheel drive under to over snap. So you have to open the wheel as you apply the power. So? It was a 118.7, I think. Oh, not uh, bad. It's probably another 4 tenths in it. How does it feel compared to the, the non Highland version? It's like halfway to a plaid in a sense. Like you have a lot of straight line speed, and then you're kind of struggling to get it slowed down and turned in with these kind of stock tires. Right. But uh, um, it definitely started to degrade very quickly. So after one or two laps, the brake pedal's really long, and oh, really? you're really struggling to kind of be able to tell how late you can brake, and then it, affects everything so um, 
I'm sure the break upgrade is really going to help us get an idea of like getting closer to that optimal lap because I can be more consistent. All right. Before we start the the street lap and then the more track oriented lap, by the end of this, do you have a prediction? Like three, four seconds off, maybe? Uh, so the fastest we've gone in a Model Three was a 14.9, I believe. I would think this car can do a 13. Whoa. Uh, if everything's right, but we have rain and the track grip is low, so. At least if it doesn't do a 14, we'll have done something wrong, for sure. Okay, cool. And keep in mind as well, these are not our, our sports coilovers. We're putting in a just a coilover conversion kit, so it's it's not going to have the same performance from the coilovers as our sports dampers do. Okay, so the first round of upgrades will include our coilover conversion kit, rear upper control arms, and front lower control arm bearings. I think that's it. So this should give us what would effectively be a street setup. We'll adjust the camber so that it's Street-ish, a little bit more sporty than factory. Uh, the front camber will go up from like 1.0 to like 1.3 or so, and the rear will be about the same, 1.4 degrees. Uh, Performance-wise, the really improvements will be the front lower control arm bearings just reduce a lot of that that lateral squish that that bushing has. So a lot of that front understeer we were getting mid corner should be resolved by that, and just having the car lower will help performance a little bit as well. But I'm yeah. not expecting huge improvements in lap time. So right. let's get the ride height dialed in, make sure the alignment's good, and we'll go try it again. All right, so here we have Jesse installing this kit very quickly. So when you talk to us at Mountain Pass, you can talk to Adam or Jesse, and we work on the cars. So these are our own design of perches. The whole coilover conversion kit is our own totally ground up design. And um, it's a great fit for people that want to be able to adjust the ride height of the car. Maybe lowering springs don't get you the exact height you want, you don't want to gamble, you can just get coilovers, have still the factory active dampers, which are decent, and uh, they install pretty quick. So we're almost on the rear here and it's only been about, what, 30 minutes? Way less, dude. Less than that. Way less. So, so we had the tow arms installed previously. They were like full stock length. Yep. So this is like a simulated stock now that we're lowering it. Now that we're lowering it, the wheels are going to tow in. Right. So we need to compensate for that by towing them out first and we'll see how close our guess is when we measure it after we put everything back together. Is it a guess when you have this awesome hex system? No, one or? one flat is exactly one millimeter or close to it as possible. So I've got a flat here. If I extend this by one flat, so I've got a flat here again. Should be one degree. Then that's one millimeter, not one degree. One, one millimeter. millimeter of tow right. out. I just don't remember exactly when we go from this height to the lowered height how many millimeters of tow mm. in the bump steer does that we're trying to compensate for. So I'm gonna do two millimeters, uh, two and a half maybe, and uh, we'll see what we get. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and then, and then move the inboard in. Okay, so we've got the coilovers installed, the front lower control arm bearings, our rear upper control arms. It took us around one hour to do all that work with two, two and a half guys. Uh, we checked the alignment. The changes that we made to the alignment were no good. Uh, so this car must have a lot less bump steer than the older uh, Model 3s. So we're going to get the tow where we want it, and then we're going to take this thing out. Alright, here we go. Got our coilovers on. <clears throat> Should be a party.
we lost the brakes after two corners. All right, so that didn't work. What's uh, what's the verdict after the street setup session? Yeah, so I was really pushing the brakes to the limit on that one. I wanted to make sure we didn't leave anything on the table. Um, so I blew the first two or three laps just trying to find the braking point. Um, the car now is more oversteered. Uh, and as we improve the setup even more and add more front camber and get more front grip, that's going to keep getting worse. So the best thing would be if we had a wing or a spoiler to settle the car down in the mid to high speed corners. Since we don't, we might have to do something else like add more rear toe in or disconnect the rear bar. But we still found six tenths um, in a setup of the car that I would say was worse than the first session. So uh, maybe a half second faster if everything was dialed in perfectly. I think a 117 would be possible, which is pretty good for the street tires. Also shows the importance of a good line, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it's just all that stuff goes together, right? The factory car was set up already a bit on the loose end as it was, and now we've lowered it and made some changes which have shifted the balance more towards oversteer. So um, we'll need to fine-tune that balance when we're using these OEM dampers to get the most out of them. Obviously, when we're using our sports coil loaders, the, the balance stays where we want it. We're kind of working here with OEM dampers, and, and that affects the balance of the car All right, so we've got a uh, starting track set up on here. We've got to just fine-tune it a little bit but we've discovered that we brought two sets of rear brake pads. So uh, we've got an Uber guy coming from two hours away, and in the meantime, we're gonna see how the balance is with our track set up and do a couple laps with the stock brakes. So what we've changed since the last run is we've lowered the car very slightly. We've taken all the shims out of our front upper control arms, have the most camber there. We've added camber to the rear, and we've disconnected the rear sway bar to kind of anticipate the fact that we're gonna have a lot more front grip with these bigger tires, try and help that excessive oversteer we were experiencing before. So let's see how the balance is and we can fine tune that a little bit while we wait for our brake pads to arrive. Then we'll do our brake upgrade with uh, smoking hot brakes. I'm sure the guys will love that. Okay, so that third session was pretty good. Disconnecting the rear bar was the right move. The car felt really good, easy to get in on the entry. Uh, the main problem was just I couldn't slow it down for the first corner. Um, but we did a 114.8, so that's already beating our best time by a tenth. And we had already started overheating uh, the car at that point, so the, there was power limiting on that entire lap. We were down about 50 horsepower. So once we have the pads on, we'll try again. I think a 13 is possible, although maybe not today. It's really hot and humid here today and uh, the car overheats faster and the track grip just in general isn't quite there but um, if we can find a few more tests that would be awesome so we'll see how much it pulled back you know
Well, Jess, how are you feeling? I need a shower. Yeah, I need a shower. It's so muggy and humid and hot. It was actually raining on one session. We were out taking pictures and it just had like these big drops of rain. I didn't see on the windshield. Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, that last session was good. Um, with the pads that aren't fading in the front now, we now have more front brake bias. So now the oversteer on entry is now understeer on entry. So I think with a bit more tuning, we can find a little bit more lap time, but that was a 114.8 again. So it was the same lap time. Um, and so I feel like, you know, there's, there's still more in it with some more tuning, but I don't think a 113, not the track like this, not doable. So um, now that being said on the blue car, we did do a 116 with these tires. So kind of for perspective, it's like 1.2 seconds or so, which is about right for the power difference. So yeah, I really like the Highland. I think it's a, a really good, uh, it's pretty similar to the blue car first feelings when I, when I drove it. Um, but yeah, the extra power is really cool. It just overheats right away. <laughs> like right so, away? Like right away, like one lap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so yeah, next up we'll have a carbon fiber rear spoiler to go with the front lip. And uh, I mean, for a street car, this is really impressive. Uh, with some more bolt-ons and race car stuff, it would go faster. But I think we're gonna leave this street, no street car-ish for now. I like it like this. Okay. We'll see if we change our mind later on. It is comfy. Yeah. yeah, it's a good car. It feels really refined. It's so much better than my 19 was. Yeah, but it still has rattles and squeaks and orange peel on the paint and stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> they can still do better. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.